Hi, welcome to this video on a Delta connected uh, resistor bank here. Uh, and this is gonna be, we're gonna talk about a balanced connected load. All right, so a balanced load, of course, needs to meet two criteria. In order to be considered a balanced load in either Delta or Y, we need to have the same power factor and the same impedance in each phase. Right? Now, those two rules are very important in order to be balanced, okay? So what we have here, we have three resistors connected in a delta configuration, each of them being 30 ohms. So we know with resistors, all resistors, right, our phase angle is zero degrees and they have a power factor of one, right? So our phase angle is zero, our power factor equals one. And now because they're all 30 ohms, that means our Z or our impedance is also equal in each phase. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that information and we are gonna solve our delta circuit and look at the phasor diagram for that. Now, what I've already done here is I've already plotted my voltage phasors here. So we're gonna say this is a 480 volt circuit, right? So that means I have my voltages already plotted and I'm just gonna write them up here to save a little bit of space. Uh, v A to B is 480 volts at zero degrees, B to C, right? 120 degrees away, B to C equals 480 volts at 240 degrees. And then lastly, V C to A equals 480 volts at 120 degrees. Also, we see that 120 degree shift, right? So our three voltages are 120 degrees apart from each other. Now my first step, I'm gonna solve the phase voltages. So I'm gonna have three phase voltages here. We're gonna have one obvious, or currents, solve for the phase currents. I'm gonna have three phase currents here, right? I'm gonna have a current going from A to B. I'm gonna have a current going from B to C. And I'm gonna have a current going from C to A. So now, in order to solve my phase currents, I'm gonna use the exact same formula. So for phase currents, I'm always gonna use the formula I of my phase equals V of my phase divided by Z of my phase. All right, so in this case, I know I have 480 volts and I have 30 ohms. So I'm gonna go 480 volts, right? A to B is 480 divided by 30 ohms. That's gonna give me an I A to B of 16 amps. Same thing with B to C and same thing again with C to A. They all equal 16 amps because they're all 480 volts and they all have that uh, 30 ohm uh, resistor. So I get that math. Now the thing I want to take care of is my angles. So because I used VA to B in order to get IA to B and they are in phase with each other where the phase angle is zero, that means that my current is gonna be at zero degrees just with my voltage. So I'm gonna put that in over here. I, A, to B, right? Now, the voltage I used to determine my B phase current was this voltage here. They're in phase, so that means my current is gonna be right here at the same time, I, B to C, which makes it at 240 degrees. Now for my last one, same thing yet again. I'm in phase. My voltage was at 120. That means my current was at 120, which puts it up here, just like so. Awesome. Now what we need to do, and this is what this video is all coming towards, is now we want to solve our line currents. Oh, that's one too many. Oops. 
line current. Sorry, guys. Line current. So our line currents. Now, I really need to think about this, right? My line A current. So if I'm looking up here, my line A current is going to be the current of this one right here, A to B, plus, because we're going into that node and we know that all current going into a node must equal the current going out of that node, plus this current here, which is A to C, which actually is the inverse of C to A. So it's this guy down here. Now we'll look at all that in a little bit more, but um, yeah, well, let's look at it right now. So what we have is the inverse of that, right? So this is V or I, C to A. What we have down here, 180 degrees apart is I, C to A. 180 degrees from B to C, we have I, C to B. And 180 degrees from here, we have I, B to A. This one over down here, sorry, is I, A to C. Just making mistakes all over, but. All right, so these are our inverse ghost or phantom phasers. Now this is really important because we just said I, A equals I, a B plus I A C. We also know that I B, right? If we look at it, the current coming here on B is gonna equal the current going this way, which would be B to A, as well as the current going this way, which would be B to C. B to C plus I B to A, I C equals I, uh, C to A plus I, C to B. All right, so we're going to take those. We end up having to solve for those inverse phasers, right? So A to C is the inverse, 180 degrees apart. That would be 16 amps at 300 degrees um, because this is at 120, so plus 180. Uh, I, B to A is 180 from A to B, so it puts it at 180. And IC to B is 180 from 240, which puts it up there at 60 degrees. So I take all that information and I put it onto an HV chart, which looks like this. So I'll give you a minute to take a look at that HV chart and see if all those numbers work out and see if we see a pattern. So that's right, that's what we see here. Now I come back down, we got 27.7 amps at 330 degrees, 27.7 amps at 210 degrees, and 27.7 amps at 90 degrees. Now we see some patterns here, and this is gonna lead to some very important rules that we can apply to all balanced circuits. But let's take a look, let's plot these real quick. So I C to A plus C to B, gives me this up here, which is IC. IB to A plus IB to C gives me right here. This is IB. And then A to C plus A to B, right, gives us I. Awesome. Now, what I really wanted to stress here and get to this point is where we could talk about these relationships. What we see and what we can always apply in a balanced circuit. Now, this applies for all balanced delta circuits, right? In a balanced delta circuit, there's two current rules that are going to be very important. I line equals I phase times the square root of three, right? So 16 times root three gives us that 27.7, .7, 
right? So the A phase was 16 amps times root three, gives us 27.7 amps, right? The other rule is that I line lags I phase by 30 degrees. So let's look at that really quick, right? So over here, phase A, 30 degrees is where I see line A. Phase B, 30 degree lag is where I see line B. Phase C, 30 degree lag is where I see line C current. Now again, these rules will only apply to that delta balanced circuit. Right? And in order to be balanced, we have to meet those two criteria of the same power factor and the same impedance in each phase. Uh, so thanks so much for watching. I hope you can apply these rules in your studies or in your work. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out the rest of the videos in the description below and have an awesome day.